Parachutes on. Parachutes on. Ready for this? Yep. This is like a DKB acro team right here. Let's do this. This is going to be fun. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Go! <laughs> All right, give me the classic thumbs up. All right. Let's do this. Let's do this. So, Michelle. Keith. You just spent a lot of time talking to companies about IT services, cybersecurity. What's, what, what do you think is like the hardest thing like to really get in those conversations? What's, what's the toughest part? Not all problems are the same, right? Yeah. Not all problems impact businesses the same. All risk is different depending on what you're trying to accomplish. And so a lot of the time I'm, I'm spending spending the majority of the conversation asking questions so that we can understand, okay, hey, you've got this problem. A, is it really the problem? Or is there another problem kind of underneath the surface that maybe you're not aware of? Yeah. And ultimately, what is like what what is the impact of that problem? Yeah. Does, so does it even matter? You're seeing symptoms of yeah. the problem and sort of like using the symptoms as indicators to go, well, you got a real problem here, this is a huge risk, or may maybe not so much. You know, I'm, I'm talking to business owners and CEOs all day, every day. Yep. And uh, I mean, as a business owner and CEO, what are some practical ways that you spend time looking at surface area problems and digging in to understand, okay, is this my real problem? Like if you see smoke, how do you figure out what the source of that smoke is, whether or not it, or it's spending money or time on? Yeah, great question. I, I, I think it's just that troubleshooting process. It, it, it's really similar to the way IT works. It's continuous troubleshooting. Uh, you are following a process and taking that to a destination. And oftentimes it is to quantify what the issues are. Well, in, in business, you're you're looking at the surface and going, okay, I'm like I'm looking at financials, and it's an indicator of this. I'm looking at APIs, it's an indicator of that. Of uh, ESAT scores, right? Customer satisfaction. Going, okay, we're doing great in this area. We're not doing so great. What is the problem? What's the client experience that's lacking? or that we're excelling at, let's amplify the things that we're doing to enhance client experience and let's let's make some changes. Let's tweak it to improve client experience where there's a real problem, an underlying issue. Uh, but yeah, I think like that's where those, where metrics are important is because those become the, the things that you look at and troubleshoot. And if you've got enough of those, then you can kind of narrow down and go, well, this is where the problem is and is that a false alarm or is that a real problem and every business has that uh, some businesses do a better job measuring the performance of the company and do a better job tracking with metrics and putting plans around that than others um, but I think the more you do that the better you get at it and so you're measuring the right things not too many things um, but I mean, IT and cybersecurity is the same same way. We're looking at the performance of our tools. We're looking at our people, and we're figuring out like what what's what's an issue that I need to spend time and I need to work on versus uh, what can I kind of ignore. And I think every business has that issue. Some businesses are just better than others, and there's a lot at IT that people just overlook and. Uh, they really need to dig into because they may have a serious cybersecurity threat, a serious IT issue. So the last two years, cybersecurity has become increasingly more important to a lot of businesses. People who didn't care anything about security, I'm, I'm 
having almost come out of the woodworks now with questions and concerns and I have conversations and some of the terms are over a lot of people's heads or you know people are, are overwhelmed because the industry is deep and it's really broad too so if you were going to give one or two places to start what would you say those places would be? I think it's a few things. I think it's looking at um, looking at best practices, really kind of zooming in and going for my business, for the size of the organization, for the complexity of the organization, for the type and the type of data that I'm working with. What, um, like, what are the things that I need to do? Is it as simple as, hey, I need to make sure that this data is protected and it's stored differently, or my system is architected in a way to where I'm safer? Uh, Multi-factor authentication is, of course, top of the list, cybersecurity training, but also just like there's different levels of that because depending on the complexity of the systems, you may have uh, different levels of multi-factor authentication, different access to different points of data, different systems. And so it can get complicated really fast. Uh, and I think that's where having a professional to guide you through that and go like, these are the things that are important. Uh, and these are the low cost, big wins. Like talk about layers of security. We know that locking the doors is step one. Uh, step one is not building a, a giant wall or hiring armed guards and dogs outside. Like that's a very expensive step. Um, unless you have outdoor dogs like me that bark a lot. That, <laughs> those, are, those are sort of cheap. You just feed them and pet them on occasion and then they bark when there's an intruder. So, um, but yeah, I, I mean, there's an order things and I think ha having getting insight doing like a, a, a security risk assessment um, and doing that high level just to go hey wh what's my profile sort of where am I at and what are the very top things that I need to start with doing cyber hygiene uh, th those basic controls and then you get deeper and deeper uh, and it's that 1% improvement increasing the maturity of your systems day after day and uh, I, I mean I'm happy that we get to do that with our clients. Yeah. How long have you been flying now? Um, seems like about three years. Anytime I'm uh, working on a new skill or learning something new. There's always a, a similarity or analogy or revelation that ties back to life or, or business or other things. So hit me with your best flying analogy in comparison to life. I mean, process is obviously a really big deal. Okay. Having checklists here, right, and using checklists. And I think the more you use the checklist and the more you start looking at, like, the granular things, like you start high level when you're learning to fly. You're looking at the big things and just going, hopefully I don't run off the runway, right? Hopefully I keep this in the air. Right. But as you master your craft, you get you get more and more detailed and you zoom in and you start looking at the little things. And I think the key is not, not to get complacent, but to continue learning, getting better at it. And I, like, I'm not memorizing the checklist, but I know the checklist. Yeah. Canesville Traffic, RV 780 November Whiskey is departing 18. We'll uh, turn hard to the west, Canesville. Off the carrier. Yeah, it was like a little uh, little takeoff there. Yeah, we got to stay below that guy. Yeah, we do. I saw him when you were pulling out.
when you were talking about the checklist, I couldn't help, you know, pastor's wife and all, thinking about the comparison to the Bible, yeah. the manual and checklist of life. Ah, uh, yes, the checklist of life. Yeah. It's also something that I feel like, you you know, you get better and better with yeah. in time, uh, strengthen that relationship with the Lord. Yeah. But it does take some discipline. It does. Spiritual disciplines are, are so important. But it's interesting. I like that you, you said, you know, you kind of start broad and then you zoom in more. And I feel like that's that's relationship-based too, right? Yeah. You're almost getting gaining a relationship with the process and the spiritual discipline because it's less about performance-based and more about gaining that relationship. That's where you move from knowledge over to wisdom, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think just build, building that business and that business wisdom, that, that business muscle, that's hard work. That takes, that, that's what takes discipline. And I think the, the people element of business has probably been what has been the most challenging. Yeah. Like, the te- the people be people in. People be people in, right? <laughs> like, technology is pretty predictable and consistent. Um, not always, but, uh, people are people. Yeah. Like, myself included. Like, there's a lot of growing just to become a better leader. And, uh, it's really hard. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We'll touch a cloud. How about that? Let's do it. Touching a cloud. I, I, uh, accidentally went through a cloud when we were skydiving once. (laughs) Not supposed to do that. Oops. (laughs) You fly. Okay. I forgot how. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. Yeah. 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 Am I supposed to go faster, slower? No, it's pretty good. You're, you're, that's a good grade to climb. Okay. Are you stop right. moving so much? What's that? I'm so stop moving? Yeah. I'm rocking around? Yeah, you are. All right. Well, we're going to descend a little bit here. Okay. You ready? We're going to start with a split S. All right. Good way to get turning in the other direction, right? Okay, let's do it. Jeez. (laughs) There she is, pulling G's. How's that feel? Feels pretty good. <laughs> don't don't puke on it now. I won't okay. You puke now. Okay. Eyes on the horizon, my friend. You've done this before. I feel like you know what you're doing. Uh, I puked before. You did. Yeah. Bought myself some fancy puke bags for this time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Glad you're feeling froggy. Well, I didn't say froggy. Here we go. <laughs> this is the one that got me last time. No? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you practice these on a regular basis, right? Absolutely. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That gained some altitude. Feeling good? Feeling good. Awesome. No pukies yet. Perfect. We will hammerhead left this time. Okay, let's do it. A little bit. A little bit. A little 
did we do the first time we flew together? I don't know. Uh. I don't know. A, a handful of them. Okay. <laughs> That's the one. That's it. That was the one. one. I love that one. That's my favorite. That one's ever. fun. But that's the one that got my stomach. Yeah. Barrel roll. Barrel roll. All right. Cheese. Barrel roll. Cheese. Oh. Cheese. Like you're Cheese. in a barrel. Cheese. Cheese. Oh yeah. We just Cheese. turned that into a loop. Cheese. Might as well. Uh huh. Cheese. Uh huh. Uh huh. Cheese. 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 Ooh. Ooh. Feel uh, it? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, good. <laughs> Getting a workout. All right, I'm going to hold the bar back. I can't reach it. Oh, no. Oh, no. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got okay. it. Okay. Hold the bag. I'm going to hold the bag. Good idea. There might be puke. All right, you gotta lift the microphone first. Now I'm gonna puke on it. No, no, you, you chose this life. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Most of my bag of tricks. Good, so we're done? <laughs> I might be able to hold it down. You feel like you had enough? I mean, you, you tell me what you want to do from here. Oh, I think I'm good on Acro. You're good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm uh, gonna puke if we do any more. Like a whole five minutes worth? I feel like our audience might want to see that. I don't know. Do they? <laughs> Do they? They won't be able to smell it, so at least there's that. Yeah, that's good. There's, there's got to be a good analogy here, like the cyber There security. has to be. Tie this in. Yeah. The baby steps for securing your business. Yeah. Start small. Start with the little stuff. You feel like you're going to puke? Because it, it can be a rough a ride. Bit. It can be a rough ride when it comes to hardening your infrastructure. Yes. Ensuring everything. Yeah. It can, it can be tough. So when we're doing the acro, when we're upside down, I feel great. Really? Yeah. What it is, it's the pressure coming back right side up again. Yeah. So that it's pressure, it like brings everything down. And then it's like my body wants to bring it back up. I'm surprised that we did like a three rotation spin and that didn't even bother you. No. It was what? It was the hammerhead. Yeah. That was the one. That's because you're weightless? No, that part didn't bother me. It's coming back from being weightless. Oh. But being weightless doesn't do it. <laughs> no, that's fun. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Not a very pretty runway. I don't know. I bet at the right time of season it would be. Except for that. It's just a little beat up. There's trees in front of us. <laughs> Yeah, that's that feeling right there. Yeah? Where my body's like, we should puke now. <laughs> yeah, that's the pukey that's, feeling. That's the pukey yeah, feeling. It is. I'm glad we've identified it. So yeah, we know where it's at now. Yeah, I think I'm going to puke. Really? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Please lift the microphone. <laughs> I will. I will. I would rather jump out of this airplane right now than puke. What? Yes. It's that puking. bad, really. puking, yeah. Ugh, what? Pukey. Really? Yeah. Feeling pukey. Ooh. This is pukey down here. This is pukey? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's all pukey now because I just feel like I'm going to puke. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to puke. It's going to uh, suck. Oh, uh, hold back. I'm trying. Hold back. I'm trying. <laughs> what if I let you fly? That makes it so much no, better, right? I don't think that would make this better. <laughs> You're playing. <laughs> <laughs> you got your air on over there? Yeah. Good? Yeah? Yeah, I got plenty of air. All right. Breathing through my diaphragm. Got my checklist. <laughs> <sighs> your checklist. My adrenaline checklist. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like there could be so many office references now, too. Oh, so many. The, the pukey curves. Feeling pukey now. Feeling pukey. Apex. <laughs> So you never puked in an airplane before? No, I have not. That wasn't me. That's turbulence. Keith? Don't give me that stink eye, dirty I didn't book. I give you a stink eye. <laughs> 
Gainesville traffic, zero November whiskey, turn on the left base for one eight full stop, Gainesville. Breathe, Michelle, breathe! Hey, One more turn! One more turn! Because we've stopped now. Mm -hmm. mm. 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 Oh, I'm gonna puke. Oh! Oh! Mm -mm. oh. Mm -mm. Dang it, I'm freaking gonna puke. Oh. oh, now I'm gonna puke. Woo! I'm salivating. Yep. Oh, Michelle, I thought you were gonna hold it together. She may still hold it together, folks. Nope. You gonna hold yeah. it together? Nope. Nope? You're not gonna hold it together? You're so close! You're so close! Damn. You made it to the ground. That is bad. Woo! <laughs> Multiple How does that camera smell? views. It's terrible. <laughs> it's absolutely horrible. I'm it's a... I'm turning my head so I don't also throw up. <laughs> it's a uh, chicken. Good. Rice. It's good. And peas. Fantastic. You can really smell the peas. Yeah. You're, you you're reliving. Aroma. You're getting to enjoy this meal a second time. I don't want to move this from my bag face because there's puke on my face. I don't think I... Yeah. So you're just going to have to tell me when to cut. Yeah, you when should you're just... Done. Yeah. Just cut right here. I All right, folks. So. I think that was a fantastic episode Woo! of DKB In Flight. Yes, way to go, Michelle. Did you it. pulled through, you did uh, it. Barely. We will see you next time on DKBN Live. <laughs>